Good afternoon, ladies and gents. Please excuse the noise on the left. That is my fish tank and it is bubbling away. And the rather poor lighting I have here. Um, it's just that time of the day where the sun's shining in the wrong direction. Um, so today I wanted to just share with you the fragrances I've been really enjoying over the last week or so. A couple of new ones in here as well. So I thought I'd just share them with you. I'm going to just dive straight in because um, I'm, on, I'm on a time limit here and I need to get back to work in about an hour. So I'm just going to whiz through these actually. So I'm going to start off with the latest purchase. It arrived only a few days ago because it's one that's just released and it's limited edition. So it's been snapped up really fast. So I was quite lucky to have ordered mine and got in there quickly. It is by Galan and it is the new Shalimar Millicim Tonka. So this is what I, I ordered, I went for it. I, I opted to have it packed in the eco packaging rather than the fancy schmancy boxes, just because I don't need another great big girl land box. It's unnecessary packaging. So this is perfectly adequate to house everything in and keep it safe. They included samples of the new ouds, two of the new ouds, which I was really, really excited about because I've been dying to try those and then just like a little, whatever that is in there, some sort of, face product. First thing I did when I opened this box was get hit with the most beautiful fragrance. Nothing that's included in this, it's just something they've sprayed on the packaging is stunning. It is absolutely beautiful and I don't recognise it. It's just the most brightest, prettiest, freshest, rosy green scent but somehow smooth and creamy. I'd love to know what it was. Nobody else has got that on their packaging. I'd love to know if they know what it is. But Let's go into these samples really quickly. So I got Cherry Oud and I got the Nude Oud. I've worn both and I already know how I feel about both. Let's start with the Oud Nude because that was the one I did actually really enjoy. Um, I don't know the notes for this. This is just like I said, a very quick video. This I get the most beautiful, soft, um, slightly powdery, slightly lotiony almond cherry Oud. It's incredibly soft, very seamless, almost transparent kind of a smell in that it's, it sort of smells pale, it smells nude, pale, but so beautiful. And I get a hint of cherry, despite there not being a cherry, because of the way the almond has been put together. There's a slight fruity nuance which smells like cherry, and it's so pretty. But there isn't really a lot of oud in this, I don't think. Um, I'm picking up on a quality that's possibly oud, but it's so gentle and pretty and classy smelling, I love that one. Cherry Oud, unfortunately, was a huge thumbs down for me. Um, it was incredibly medicinal, to the point where I got transported into this strange, bizarre and rather dark, different reality of being in an asylum, wrapped in this horrible, dank, scary, oppressive environment and you're smelling this medicinal wash on the walls and the floors, and there's this ugly medicinal cabinet that's got nothing good inside of it. And any medicines or drugs that you're being given has been laced with this cherry that's sharp and not nice. It's slightly, it's like a synthetic cherry, really sharp. Like it masks this horrible medicinal smell that makes both the smells even worse, if you know what I mean. But there's something very scary laced behind imagination is horrific this is where i went with this fragrance it was such a strong image in my head and even through the wear it just seemed to get more medicinal and more it was so strong and i just had to scrub it off i had to scrub it off i just did not enjoy this on me it just went completely sour went down south very quickly hated it absolutely hated it definitely not a safe blind buy so that's just a pre-warning for those who smell things the same way that i do Cherry Oud, massive thumbs down. New Dude, massive thumbs up. Let's get into the Shalimar Millicine Tonka now. I'm not going to lie. I'm not that familiar with Shalimar. I know roughly what it smells like. The reason I opted to get this is because of people talking about the Tonka in content and saying how much like it was Tonka Imperial. I loved Tonka Imperial. But I always felt like it was just a bit too simple for the money. A little bit too sort of fleeting and, and just a bit bare. And having a Shalimar backbone sounded like a lovely match. It sounded like something so interesting to try. Now this is a 50 mil. It comes as 50 mil. I don't know if it's still available. If it's popular, maybe they'll bring it back in. I don't know. This is exactly as I imagined it would be. It's a very, it's that Tonka Imperial, that very 
pure beautiful slightly buttery but also very powdery tonka not heavy but very present still it's very lovely quality tonka and then you're getting it's like it's kissed with shalimar i'm no expert on shalimar i couldn't tell you the notes of the composition all i can say is that in here it makes me think strongly my cats will not leave me alone today shalimar dna reminds me of a bit of cocoa chanel cocoa that kind of soft resinous ambery flat coca cola that has that vintage touch this, this composition with the tonka really reminds me of cocoa from chanel just the cocoa de parfum so smooth but also powdery it is a really beautiful scent i'm really happy with it the only thing i'll say about this unfortunately on me is it lasts very little time at all it's so soft it's very fleeting it doesn't really it's there but it doesn't really project it's the only disappointment thing but then that is me nothing seems to last on me it's really disappointing it's quite unfair really anyway that's the Shalimar, that's the new Minoseem Tonka Shalimar. So next up I have one from the company of Rosa Salas. This is my favourite from Rosa Salas. And it's actually an inspired fragrance from, I believe, Herod. I believe it's Herod, but personally I think this is absolutely beautiful in its own right, as it's, its own composition. It doesn't really remind me of Herod, it reminds me more of Minwe Demi. And what's interesting about this one is when I first mentioned it, sorry, here's the bottle. When I first ever talked about this, about I think two, maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago, in the same video, I also had a sample of Minwe at Demi, because it just launched, and I couldn't believe how similar they both were. It was a big coincidence that happened to be in the same video, but they are such similar scents. This one has much more of a fruity, sort of a plum, honey, tobacco, with spices. It's, I absolutely love it. I think it's beautiful. It does live in the same family as Herod, as Minwe Demi, as Changing Constance. It lives in exactly the same family. For me, this one has far more punch. It has far more presence. It's cozy, the, the fruity, the sort of plumminess of it is really quite beautiful. It's sort of, that fruitiness really does come forward, which I love. It's not fleeting, it's not too soft. It is a bit boozy. It's even got a slight apple nuance, I would say. But I absolutely love amethyst. This is the perfect time to wear. I usually wear this sort of from late autumn into winter, but at the moment I just it seems to be hitting the spot and I'm really, really enjoying amethyst. So that is one I'm currently enjoying. Recently, Rosa Salas has launched a few new fragrances, but the one that I was really interested to try was called Lip Rose, and it's this interpretation, I believe, of lipstick rose. This is the packaging that it comes in, like this, and they're just nice little pillar boxes it keeps it nice and safe so this is a 30 mil i think they come in 50 mil 30 mils i think you get 10 mils now as well so lip rose actually reminds me more of lipstick fever from juliet has a gun that was like a leathery lipstick with on me it always had like this sort of pencil shaving um soft woody kind of flow and i get a lot of that in here I get a lot of it in here, which is really interesting. And I, cause I actually sold that fragrance and I always regretted it. It's this one actually opens up with that slight waxy lipstick kind of feel that you would expect. But it also has this pencil shaving, soft woody flow about it as well. And what I also think is quite interesting is it's quite fizzy. As you, as you get into the dry down, it's quite a fizzy kind of lipstick. Which I think it might be Ambroxin, but it gives it that kind of uplifting fizz. And there's really nice fruity nuances in here as well. So this one I'm actually enjoying. I'm, I'm still, you know, testing it out and wearing. It's a really lovely one. It definitely gives me lipstick fever vibes, which is really, really cool. So that is another one I am enjoying at the moment. While we're on the subject of Rosa Salis, I also want to mention another fragrance. I bought it for somebody else for their birthday. They don't know it yet. Um, so hopefully they won't figure that out from watching this video, but it is actually the the interpretation of uh, Lost Cherry. Lost, no, I've got Lost Cherry from Tom Ford. The person I bought this for loves Lost Cherry, loves it, and they tried the sample of Mon Cherie that I had and thought it was absolutely amazing. The girl I work with loves Mon Cherie, and when she wears it, it just the whole place smells like Cherry Bakewell's sweet moorish delicious beautiful cherry is in trend right now it is seriously in trend um there's so many cherry fragrances coming out the woodwork but monastery has been out for about i think about two two years now or possibly even longer and so far 
and I have tried a lot of these new cherry fragrances, including Cherry Oud. I've tried the new cherry from Kayali. This Monchery, personally, is my favourite. It is a proper, juicy, glacé, shiny, bright red cherry fragrance. Slight almond nuances. I don't know all the notes in here, but it is the most true, juicy cherry bakewell scent. It's a slight bakery thing in the background, but the cherry sits right at the front, and it is definitely worth checking out. If you love your cherry, please check this out because it's absolutely fabulous. I'm not going to get it out of the box. Like I say, this is actually a present for somebody. But I, did, I wanted to mention it because it really is worth the mention. And obviously being in cherry season, I had to mention Mon Cherie. So that is a fantastic one to check out if you love your cherry. So I've got five more I want to talk about that have been really hitting the spot. Let's start with my Delectation Splendid by Terry. This one's actually discontinued. The last time I talked about this fragrance, I had a lot of comments asking me where I got it from. Every now and again, you're lucky enough to find a seller. So I definitely would check out eBay. Um, this is so lovely this one it opens out a bit medicinal which isn't my favorite stage of this fragrance overall it's a, it's a plummy tobacco it's that it's that, again that same dna that plummy kind of tobacco you really can't beat a lovely sort of plum honey spicy tobacco kind of scent around this season i'd say that in comparison to amethyst amethyst is much brighter happier has much brighter fruity nuances this one is kind of richer deeper it has i can't remember the spices in here i have no notes to hand it has the most beautiful trail. It seems to last all day long. It has a cold vibe, which I actually quite like. It's slightly boozy, it's slightly spicy. And despite the sort of medicinal vibe it has in the beginning, it seems to really balance out and, and settle down. It's just a very Moorish scent. I've been wearing it occasionally in the last couple of weeks and really enjoying it. So that is Delectation Splendid. Love the bottle and that colour as well. Next, we'll jump to Rose Rouge from Van Cleef and our pearls. I'm trying to tiptoe back into some rose because I've not been wearing many rose fragrances lately and I've been suddenly craving rose, but it has to be that gourmand, sweet, jammy, woody rose. I've had other people mention and comment on the rose in here and how it reminds them of Rose's Berberanza. I never realised it until I sniffed them together and I thought, you know what, that actually really does. Maybe that's why I love it so much. It has that really jammy, sweet, um, almost slightly boozy rose. And what I like about this one is it's not as, it's not complicated. It's just that the rose is really sweet and jammy. Definitely a dark red rose in here. But it has vetiver, patchouli, which gives it this beautiful, sharp woodiness. It's not like a dirty patchouli. It still smells very elegant and very well put together. Actually, this was my scent of the day. Really, really enjoy it. So that is one of my favourites. That is Van Cleef and Arpels Rose Rouge. So this next one, it really is such a magical, enchanting, little mystical fragrance for me. Absolutely beautiful. I've been wearing it a few times. But as the weather's getting damper, the temperature's getting colder, the woods are picking up that kind of mushroomy quality, woodland autumnal smells. I keep craving Dryad from Papillon. Dryad was quite challenging when I first tried this. I didn't actually like it because I was spacing it off of a first impression, which you cannot do with this. You can't do it with any fragrance, but you certainly can't do it with Dryad. The magic is in the Dryad and the magic is in the wear, the experience, the story. And ultimately, this is like a... A dewy, mossy woodland. It has beautiful, bright nuances from Narcissus. I even get a slight leathery nuance in here. It has a kind of pickly vibe. It's like a brightness in that sense. It's criminal not to have notes in front of me. I know this. Um, sometimes it's best just to go with what you feel and what you're getting rather than what is listed because it, it can influence what you think you're smelling. For me, it's just this damp undergrowth of a woodland path, a path leading into a woodland that just feels like it's got this sense of enchantment, of mythical enchantment about it. And you get deeper and deeper and you get more of the smells of the mosses, the mushrooms. There's this beautiful orris that, that Liz uses in her perfumes that always make me think of a mushroom, but in a nice way, in a glowy, magical kind of a way. Dry, woody scent, very, very dry, but it's just got this balance from this damp mossiness ah oh, you have to try it to understand it it's very strong it's very niche very artisan um very unusual that is the beautiful dryad from papillon artisan perfumes so these last two are much more recent purchases we'll start off with the newer fragrance from yves saint laurent la it's from the la vestiaire 
La Vestia collection. And it is Baby Cat. Baby Cat is so addictive. So delicious. So, so, so addictive. It's a sort of suede vanilla incense fragrance. I get a lot of the suede in the beginning. In fact, I find it to be more leather. Like a real fresh, sexy leather, personally. And dark, very dark. That's what comes off on my skin in the beginning, but it's very much wound up with this vanilla. It's, it's combined with this vanilla, and this vanilla is dark and beautiful. I always think of it as the actual vanilla pod. I feel like that leathery casing of the vanilla pod is what we're really getting here. And as it dries down, oh, I just love the dry down. It's this nose tingly, not too strong, but definitely present incense, slightly smoky. It goes kind of powdery, but you're still getting this buzz of incense. I've been wearing this watching the Rings of Power because I started wearing it for that. I, can't, I have to pull for it every time now because it seems to be enhancing the experience. I don't know why, it's a bit weird. Um, but I associate this with the, we're watching the Rings of Power now. I think the name Baby Cat is actually really adorable, although perhaps it deserves more of a darker, a dark claim like gothic cat or just black cat but then it is cozy and it is a soft powderiness to it so perhaps it does it does work for the fragrance and out of all my really cozy ones i had a decant recently of amouage's material which is a beautiful amber tonka scent love that it's a lot of these cozy sort of scents that are now coming out of the woodwork this one i think is the the queen it's something about it something so rich and deep and addictive i mean i've obviously used quite a bit of it can't get enough of it absolutely enjoying and so happy to have baby cat from ysl i recently purchased a handful of samples from a company online one that actually did stand out to me was wood jasmine from bdk and I, I i ended up buying it i really surprised myself with how much i love this i hadn't expected to be buying another fragrance not a bdk i tried so many from bdk i didn't enjoy a lot of them something always either lacking or slightly just not satisfactory. The name Wood Jasmine cannot be taken too literally here. This really is not a jasmine fragrance. Maybe that's why I like it so much. But what this is, is actually a fruity woody scent. This is a musky fruity woody scent. There's definitely a floral nuance. There's definitely a jasmine nuance, which is actually really pretty. Now, when I first sprayed this, I was met with a scent that really reminded me of Ojan from Parfums de Mali, a kind of apple delicious baked apple it's not exactly pastry vibe it wasn't straight up like ojan it just reminded me of ojan from the way the fruits are presented but when you get past the opening those fruits just die back a little bit and you get this lovely very dry wispy woods with a kind of cider sort of cider boozy sensation and then I start to pick up on these little floral touches. The whole composition is actually quite airy, quite breezy. It's so easy to wear. There's nothing heavy or dense or gourmand really in this at all. I like that it seems to be trying to pull in different directions. It's almost a little nondescript in a way that it makes it easy. It makes it very enjoyable to pull for, which is a nice, easy, everyday scent that I've been wearing for work. I don't know much about BDK. Do they use naturals? I don't know. But there's something about this that's making me think of natural elements in autumn. Dry, crispy autumn leaves. That little feeling of cider, that stewed apple feeling. That little flutter of jasmine on the wind. Almost like it was on the wind. So you're getting that feeling that summer's at an end and autumn is beginning. A little mothball sensation in here. Like a wispy, slightly, not alamalic, but something musky that's a little mothbally but not unpleasant because it just gives it this fluffy feeling if you know what i mean it almost gives it a slightly whimsical touch and i i do get that again that feeling of a woodland nymph a woodland fairy there's just something fluttery and pretty but kind of fruity and woody and just all sorts of things i don't know I'm really enjoying this. I've only had this for a few days. This is my current go-to. Absolute easy reach. Love it. Love it so much. So that is Wood Jasmine from BDK. So yeah, just a little little roundup of fragrances that I'm currently enjoying. Guys, thanks so much for watching as always. And I'll see you on my next one. Take care. Over and out.